Welcome to How to Yu-Gi-Oh! Historic Archetype, Klee. Okay, so Klee is a very important archetype in Yu-Gi-Oh! Why is it important? Um, I consider it important because it's the first archetype in Yu-Gi-Oh! to introduce to us what we call today a boss monster. Have we had boss monsters in the past? Yes, we have. But the difference is, is that what we call boss, mo a boss monster in the past weren't really boss monsters. These were cards that took effort and required uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! high Yu-Gi-Oh! game knowledge to summon. Facts. You couldn't just um, have them or make them for the sake of making them. You really needed to play Yu-Gi-Oh! at a high level at that point in time. Whereas Klee introduced a boss monster in a deck which was debilitating, could lock down a mechanic or a part of the game, and could really do something that wasn't seen before. It starts off with our first consistency card, Klee for its Scout, a normal pendulum that you can see in front of you. With the following effect, you can see there it's pendulum scale saying you cannot special summon monsters except Klee monsters. This effect cannot be negated. Once per turn, you can pay 800 life points and add one Klee card from your deck to your hand except Klee for its Scout. Indeed, that is the case. This is the pivotal card that starts everything. Here it is, the boss monster, the harbinger of darkness, the card that brought about you can't play. Full lockdown Yu-Gi-Oh introduced because of this card. Say hello to our little friend, Ap Apo Clifford Towers. You don't get to play, you just lose. Indeed, this is the card that changed Yu-Gi-Oh forever. It is the introduction of this card that Konami introduced a boss monster. What a boss monster is, what it entails, and what it means for the game going forward. Now, let's read its effect. Cannot be special summoned. Requires three Klee tributes to normal summon slash set. If this card is normal summoned set, it is unaffected by spell, trap effects, and by activated effects. Any monster whose original level slash rank is lower than this card's current level all special summon monsters lose 500 attack and defense. Once per turn, you can make your opponent send one monster from their hand or their side of the field to the graveyard, their choice. So, what does Apo Clifford Towers mean? Well, as long as it exists, you cannot kill it. It cannot be killed by anything that is a rank 10 or level 10 or lower. So, you, so Synchro 10s can't kill this. Rank 10s or lower can't kill this. Level 10, monsters or lower can't kill this. Yes, when this card came out, it was completely unbeatable. It was so, so strong. And you got to remember, by the time this, when this card was released, Kaijus were not introduced into the game. It was, I think, the set after, the year after this card was released, that we got Kaijus introduced to our game. So at that point in time, we had ways to tribute over cards and get rid of a boss monster. But before Kaijus existed, uh, Paul Clifford Towers was a beast. You could not get rid of this card with card effects, uh, with monsters anyway. While yes, there was um, removal spells, but you got to remember those removal spells were limited. Dark Hole was at one, I believe at the time. Lightning Vortex, no one was playing that. And did it, Lightning Storm didn't exist. Regeki was banned. Yes, Regeki, we did not have that in the game. It was banned, I believe. We did not have it at all in the game. So it was at this point, there was no Regeki. You have Dark Hole at one, possibly. The amount of removal spells for monsters just didn't exist. There wasn't Lightning Storm. We didn't have Dark Ruler no more. Raigeki was banned in TCG. It was an absolute menace. You can't handle this power. So yeah, Apple, Apple Clifford Towers is a monster that brought a big legacy into Yu-Gi-Oh! The legacy of 
you cannot play. The legacy of lockdown. And it is, is indeed because of Apo Clifford Towers that we've come to see boss monsters as undefeatable objects that you just cannot beat. That's what Apo Clifford Towers brought to Yu-Gi-Oh! And the Klee deck usually played these three Floodgate cards in their main deck. One being Skill Drain, two Lose One Turn, and three Soul Drain. Early time it was played, these three cards were significantly useful. And I think Clifford Towers got Skill Drain limited. I think this was the first time Skill Drain got limited in uh, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh! at this point. Skill Drain was in TCG especially, I think. I don't know about OCG. I think OCG as well. But I think for, yeah, in general, Skill Drain got limited after Klee's were released because it was that oppressive. Lose one turn, I don't think was ever hit because it while it was um, powerful, it wasn't as bad. And Soul Drain, well, it was a hit or miss card. It was a side deck card usually put in at a time for graveyard centric cards uh, effects weren't really there in Yu-Gi-Oh at this point in time so we have to bear this in mind and essentially that's generally it really so Klee's have a lot of history a lot of baggage they've got with them are there other floodgates you could play with Klee now of course you can but Klee has now been power crept to high heaven and now it doesn't have that oppression that it did once before because you can kaiju them we do have a lot of removal spells regeki is at three we've got lightning storm now uh yes while well, skill drain is at three and all these cards are at three at at this point in time clees are just not the same they just aren't the same let's move on and so here we have the clee extra deck so Klee's got a link monster, which was Clifford Genius. And the, usually the monsters, extra deck monsters that would go into would be Cyber Dragon Nova overlay on top for Cyber Dragon Infinity, as you see there. So we have the Omni Negate there. They didn't really play much, but 90% of the time played a lot of floodgates, like lose one turn, skill drain, and soul drain. Just chuck in any amount of floodgates that could you could play and you'd put it in there with the way UK is now at the moment a lot of the floodgates have been limited now except for skill drain summon limit is banned so i do not feel clee would really play well in today's environment indeed clee is just not it's not the same and clee really doesn't have that impact as it once did when it originally was released but that doesn't deny the impact and significance that clears had to the game clear introduced for us as players what a boss master is because before clears Yu-Gi-Oh didn't really have a boss monster a boss monster in Yu-Gi-Oh did not exist and yeah many would say a card like shooting quasar dragon or things like that but before Clifford, Apo Clifford Towers, boss monsters in Yu-Gi-Oh just didn't exist. You could always beat a card in Yu-Gi-Oh at that time. It was back and forth. Yu-Gi-Oh was like rock, paper, scissors. Rock beats scissors, scissors beats paper, paper covers rock. There was always a way to beat a card in Yu-Gi-Oh before Apo Clifford Towers came out. Monsters could inherently beat each other. There wasn't a case of one card is stronger than another card. It was always that there was this monster that was good in this situation, but would be bad in this situation. You always had to, your monsters were like a toolbox and you had to get out the right monster for the right situation. And if you got out the wrong monster for the wrong situation, well, you were going to lose. And I think that's all I've got to say here about Klee. We come to the end of this video. So, as I like to say, you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master. My fate, right, is in your hands.